doesn't seem right to have something on your blade and to go like this seems counterintuitive. Hopefully we don't lose any fingers. Good morning, modern steaders. Uh, look at that. We got our first snow late yesterday into last night. 23 degrees out this morning. Everything froze up. But man, does it look beautiful. A couple of weeks ago, we were sent up a chainsaw sharpening kit for my chainsaw. And I got looking at it, and I'm like, I don't know how this works. I did some more research, and I had to buy a couple of other parts and pieces to make it work. So after we do all of our animal chores, we'll get to that part of the video. I'm excited. I might have a new easy way to sharpen our chainsaw. I don't think the boy goats have ever seen snow before. I don't know what they think about it. What do you guys think? Huh? What do you think of the snow? Is it too cold for you? Huh? What do you think? You don't like it, do you? <laughs> Look at them walking. They're picking their feet up. You guys gonna be living in the barn this winter? What do you think, Zeke? You like the snow? No? There, I got you some nice warm water. Ah, oh, you are still letting them nurse off you. I was wondering. I haven't seen it in a while. Maggie's still getting some. Come on and Hope. Want some hay? Come on, let's go out to the feeder. There's eight feet of feeder, and they all gonna wanna be in the same one spot. So Willa, did your date work the other day? And who's gonna be the next one for a date? If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen us building our barn, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. And now's a great time to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. But one of the reasons we chose this barn design is we can have our workshop in the middle, and then on the ends we can have smaller stalls. And we wanted smaller ones like height and size wise because we get really cold here in the winter time. So to be able to keep the animal's body's heat in a smaller area, make it easier to keep warm and keep the water from freezing. So it's 23 degrees out right now, guys. And the water is not frozen in here. Get some of that hay out. That water's not frozen. That water's not frozen. And neither is that one. What do you think, Hope, of all this weather? What are you doing, Figaro? What do you think of the snow, huh? Ah, just checking the weather forecast, and a couple of days we're supposed to get two decent snowstorms. <laughs> so I better get the plow on the truck and get that checked out sometime. The chickens don't always like to come out in the snow. Come on guys, it's going to be a long winter for you. They're like, yeah, we don't want to come out. Oh. Here come the ducks. You guys want the water, don't you? I think we all just need time to get adjusted to this. <laughs> it's been so nice and it's like, bam, here you go, here's winter. <sighs> we got the winter tires on just in time. We're gonna be needing those pretty soon. A couple of weeks ago, this showed up in our PO box saying it was a chainsaw sharpening system. I don't know who sent it, but I kind of, I got looking at it and I was like, how does it work? You're supposed to put your chainsaw in there and then, push down with the chainsaw in there while it's running and it's supposed to sharpen it. I got looking a little bit further and I found out that this doesn't work with every chain. You need a special chain for this. So, let me show you. <laughs> I did a little research and I found that Oregon makes a chainsaw sharpening system that works with that. It's over here. So in the kit comes a new bar, the sharpening system, 
and a different style of chain. Let me show you this chain. This chain is like a straight edge on it, where, let me bring you over a regular chain. Let's see if we can focus it. You cut on the inside bevel right here. Here we go, that normal chain, you have like that little C in there, and you sharpen it with a file, and that's how it, where it cuts. So on this chain, it's different. It's supposed to be able to put your chain right in that little system and sharpen it up. Today we're gonna to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I got a regular chain from Oregon, and I got their new power shop system. So I figured we can do a side-by-side -side comparison with two brand new chains and see how it works. So let's put on the power shop system first. We'll try that out. So we're gonna take off the regular bar. I keep wanting to call it blade. It's not a blade, it's the bar and chain. Regular blade. This is the reg This is the original blade. This is a regular bar and chain. Let's take this off now. And put it back on after. And this is the new fan dangled power shock system. Want to make sure the chain's going in the right direction. Let's first try out the power shop chain. You're not going to want to be right here. My first impressions with the chain is it works really well. I didn't know how it would cut, if it would cut differently being a different profile for the edge, but that's cutting nice and straight. We're getting some good chips. The shavings, the chips, shavings, whatever you want to call them, are smaller, even though this is a brand new saw and shop. They're definitely different than a normal chainsaw chips. We'll have to look at that when we put the other blade back on. But I'm really impressed with how it's cutting. It's cutting nice and straight. It's not pulling one way or another. I'm curious to see, we'll do some more cuts and then we'll try sharpening it and see how the sharpening system works out. And then once we do that, I'll put the other chain on and see how the other chain compares to this one. Let's do some more cutting and see how it goes. This is a smaller cherry log, and every once in a while the saw binds up. I don't know if it's because of the blade or what, but let's take a piece of maple and see how it cuts the maple, see if the density of the wood makes a difference on the chain. But so far, I mean, we're cutting some really thin rounds. Look at that. Nice and straight. It cuts true. It cuts. I like that. Curious to see how it sharpens later on. It might be the new go-to chain. All right, we got some maple right here. I'll try it on some maple. And then after the maple, 
We'll try it on a piece of apple wood because apple is one of the hardest woods I've ever had to cut. to be stalling a little bit when we're cutting. It's cutting good, but it's not cutting smooth. I don't know if you can hear the way it sounds on the chain. It's different than a normal chain, but the chips are funny. Let me bring you in and show you the chips. The chips that it's making are definitely different. But that's gonna be because of the profile of the chain. It's giving a nice smooth cut. But even that looks different. I'm liking the way the rounds are looking. Let's cut a piece of apple and see what happens and then we'll sharpen it. See how it does on dead wood. Dead wood is some of the hardest wood to cut. I have some dead apple wood right here. cut the dead apple really well. I think it did the best job cutting that out of all the wood so far. Normally the regular chains have a hard time cutting dead wood. I don't know, I'm skeptical about it, but I'm really liking it at the same time. <sighs> Let's put on the sharpening stone and see what happens. It just seems weird to me to put a stone on the front of your chain to sharpen it. <sighs> so, the way the sharpening system works is you have two holes right here in your bar. Can you see them? Bam! Right there. This sharpening system, you open it up. There's a stone. There's a stone right here that goes into the system. Boom. So you're going to put the sharpening system up and in the two holes. Close it. It's got a lock. It locks in place and then we push this down on a stone or a stump and it engages the stone onto the chain with the angle. It seems counterintuitive to be pushing something into your blade. It feels like it's like, I don't want to do that. That doesn't seem right. Let's try it and see what happens. Hopefully we don't lose any fingers. <laughs> camera showed it enough but there's sparks flying out of the bottom you can see metal yeah you can see on the blade that the edge is cleaned up let's try it again it's definitely nervous the first time doing it Let's try it out. This 
stone's not in bad shape. It's got oil on it from the chainsaw bar oil. It's getting a groove cut into it, but that's not bad. I thought maybe that sharpening stone was just going to disintegrate. Let's see how it cuts now. See if we can tell a difference now that it's been sharpened. There we go. You can see it's been sharpened. It does work. Let's see how sharp it is now. decided what I think of the chain yet. We've got some birch over here. Let's try to cut some birch up. You hear that whistle? Cuts that birch nicely. it does make a huge difference on what kind of wood you're cutting. It did good with the maple, it did really good with birch. With the dead apple, it did really well with apple and cherry. It cut different. I'm curious to see when we edit the video how the sound's coming across on the camera. It's got like a whistling noise. It's a very different noise than I'm used to when I'm running my chainsaw. I have some kiln dried pine that I want to try cutting with this chain and seeing how that works. What are you doing? <laughs> side comparison with the two different style chains. The original style right here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Right there and then the new style of the Oregon Power Shop. But we're not gonna have time to do that in today's video. If you guys want to see that video leave it in the comments down below. We can do another video comparing the old style original chain to the newer one. I'm still up in the air about the Power Shop chain. It works really good in some situations. It works good on the smaller maple. The bigger maple that I cut up in that last firewood pile, it did it, but it was slow. The apple wood, it did it, but it was slow. Same with the cherry. Um, the apple that was completely dead, it cut through really well, which a normal chain usually doesn't. For a kindling, firewood, small pieces, it works well. For trimming up brush, it's gonna work good, but I'm not sure how it would work cutting a big tree down. And it's weird, when you're running it, it doesn't run as smooth as a regular chain. There's more vibration. The sawdust that it makes is different. But the whole sharpening system of it is so slick. I'm not the best at chainsaw file sharpening. I can always get off, I'll get at different angles, I won't get both sides the same, and then you end up cutting crooked. So I like it for that reason, but I don't know if it's the cure-all for everything. If you've used one before, or if you're still using one, leave it in the comments down below. Let me know how you like it and what it's been over there. I think they've been out for a year or two. I can't feel my fingertips. It is cold, ain't it? 
I think I can probably take the mower deck off now. Need to get the old tires out of the back of the truck. Let them melt down here before we put them back up in the loft. Oh, a burr, guys. It is chilly out. Ah, oh, there we go. Get that fire stoked and going. Ah. Oh. Look at them come. Here they come. It's chicken feed, not goat feed we're bringing. Fluffy goat, yeah. you got your winter coat on. I don't know, look how chubby coat looks. I know, last year I kept being like, oh my gosh, they're so, are you sure? And yeah, right when the cold weather went away, that went away. As soon as the cold weather comes, they chunk up. Oh, little man, look so fuzzy. I have two more CWC license plates sent up. One's from a viewer from North Carolina. And then we got another one sent up from Great Britain. So we gotta figure out where we want them on New York City. We do one here and then maybe put this one because this is totally different. It'll always be different right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then next time we get another plate, we can put one over here. Yeah. Oh, Coke? You're gonna put that one there because it's totally different? Yeah, this one's gonna go right here because it's a Great Britain style license plate. Does that look even? Look at that. Old New York City's pretty styling. With CWC? With CWC license plate. What did Moose tell you there, Livies? Uh, I didn't listen, but I'm pretty sure he told me 11. 11? I think it's a little early, so. Yes. I'm going with six because they keep cutting back. Man, look at them clouds. That's crazy. Two, four, six, seven. Uh, I was gonna say, gonna say seven. I thought you were, I heard you trying to figure it out what you were gonna say. I, oh, I, I should have stuck on my original. Hey. And you should have went with your gut. Moose says he told you so. We're supposed to be getting like eight inches of snow over the next couple of days. So we need to get the plow on the truck and see if it works still. <laughs> I haven't touched it since I took it off last winter. How'd we do? Did I get it? So if we did everything right. Let's get this over. Bam. That side's locked in. This side. There we go. Let's check and make sure the lights are working. So let's go off auto. No. Ah, yes, they are working. Sweet. Let's try high beams. Maybe they're working, I think so. They're bright if you look at them. I'm just surprised the truck lights are on, but my fog lights are off. That's it, now they're working. Let's 
been six months since we've operated this thing. I forgot. We got a switch right here. Truck and plow. That operates the headlights. Perfect. Put it back on auto. I just learned something new about the plow by accident. If you give if you give the up button a double tap, it automatically goes up all the way. I didn't know that. I learned something new for this year's plowing. Well, we're ready for the snowstorm if we if it comes, but it won't hurt my feelings if it never never shows up. But at least we know the plow is hooked up and we don't need to do nothing to it. We got a bunch of firewood we need to pick up down below before it gets plowed up. We got a bunch of small little wood right here and I'm assuming when I'm plowing this winter because I've never plowed over here before and we push in the snow and we wanted to push it as far this way as I can. We'll end up taking out this firewood if we don't move it now. Yeah, that'll be a good little stack of wood to bring in the house. Ah, this week we've drinking six five gallon pails worth of coffee. We can add to the compost pile. Oh yes, look at that delicious coffee. And we got some tea in here. And a little bit of other things. Oh, that's how we stay so energized, drinking all this coffee. Last one. Now these tea bags say right on them, backyard compostable. I'm curious to see how true that is. Not having to hand file sharpen a chain because I'm not very good at that I will admit it so it's nice being able to have the option of using the different chain and sharpening it that way but it's still different to get used to it cuts differently and everything so I'm gonna keep trying it and see what we think if you guys have had experiences with this chain leave it in the comments down below let me know but we're getting prepared here for a snowstorm we're supposed to be getting anywhere from five to eight inches of snow so, yeah. And I just got a Facebook notification saying that four years ago this day, we had just finished siding the house. <laughs> no snow, and here we are getting ready for it. Man, I wish we weren't getting snow till after Thanksgiving. But hey, it is what it is. It's out of our control. I was just reading a quote. 
Your present circumstances don't determine where you can go. They only merely determine where you start. Nito Quibin. I don't know if I got that name right or not, but it's something like that. That's so true. The next chapter of our book is easy for us to start. Just the last chapter don't matter. Just start writing and get going on your journey. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.